In the previous video, we learned about ROR Rules Part A. This video covers Part B, Section 1 of the rules. These rules are called Steering and Sailing Rules, and they apply to all vessels in any condition of visibility. It does not matter how far you can see, you will always have to follow rules in this section. Every vessel must always keep a good watch, using eyes, ears, and any equipment available, according to the situation and weather, so that it can fully understand what is happening around and avoid the risk of collision. For example, if a collision happens and during investigation it is found that you were not using a radar when it was available, it will go against you and will be seen as an omission to rules, even in clear weather. Radar is an important part of the lookout for early detection of targets. Simply to say, always look, listen, and use all means to avoid collision. A ship must always travel at a speed that is safe for the conditions. Safe speed means the vessel can 1. Avoid collision by taking proper action in time. 2. Stop within a safe distance. For many large vessels, stopping a ship can be difficult at full speed. Reducing speed and having engines ready is important for such vessels. Important factors to consider when deciding safe speed are weather and visibility, traffic, number of ships nearby, including fishing vessels and fishing equipment, other vessels like rigs at sea, background lights at night or backscatter of own lights, how fast the ship can turn or stop, water depth and room to maneuver. In today's modern world, Mostly all vessels are fitted with radar. Such ships must also consider radar information. Any limitations of radar. For example, is it an X-band radar or an S-band radar? Both these radar performances are different. X works good in coastal areas, while S performs good in rain or rough weather. In short, always go at a speed where you stay in control, can stop safely, and avoid hitting anything. Rule 7 is Risk of Collision. Let's divide it in easy points to understand it better. 1. Always check for risk. Every ship must use all available means – eyes, ears, radar, ARPA, etc. – to find out if there's a risk of collision. 2. Don't guess. Don't assume there's no risk just because you're not sure. If in doubt, treat it as a risk. 3. Radar use. If the ship has radar, use it properly, but do not over-rely. Use other means to verify. Scan the area. Sometimes change the scale to long scale to get early warning. Use ARPA to track other ships. If there is no ARPA, use manual radar plotting. 4. When to assume risk. If other vessels' compass true bearing is not changing much, then a collision risk exists. And, even if the bearing changes, risk still exists if the ship is close or with big ships. In short, use all means to check. If in doubt, assume risk. A steady true bearing means danger of collision. Rule 8 is action to avoid collision. Let us break it down in easy points to understand it clearly. Take action early and clearly. Any action to avoid collision must be positive, taken in good time and with the rules. Make it obvious and clear to other vessel. Change of course or speed should be big enough for the other ship to clearly notice. Don't keep making small, confusing changes. Course change can be best action. If there's enough space, a clear course change alone is often the most effective way to avoid a close situation. Keep a safe distance. The action taken should result in passing safely. Keep checking until the other vessel has completely passed clear. Slow down or stop if needed. 
If necessary, reduce speed, stop, or reverse engines to avoid collision or to gain time to assess the situation. Don't impede safe passage. A ship that must not impede another vessel must act early to give safe sea room. This duty continues even if there's risk of collision. The stand-on vessel is the one whose passage must not be impeded, but it still has to follow the rules if a collision risk arises with other vessel. In short, act early, act big, keep it clear, keep it safe, and slow down if needed. Rule 9 is narrow channels. That means less sea room. In most cases, such places will be areas near the port. The rules tell us how we should act in such places. Let's break it down in easy points. 1. Keep to the right side. In a narrow channel, as far as possible, ship should stay to the starboard, right-hand, side of the channel. 2. Small boats don't get in the way. Small ships, sailing boats, and fishing boats should not block the way of bigger ships that can only move safely inside the channel. 3. Don't cross if dangerous. A ship should not cross the channel if doing so would block a big ship that is moving along the channel. 4. Overtaking rules. If a ship wants to overtake, it must signal its intention with sound signals. The ship being overtaken should help by giving a signal if it agrees. 5. Avoid anchoring in the channel. A ship should not anchor in a narrow channel unless it is absolutely necessary, for example, in emergency. In short, in narrow channels, keep right, don't block big ships, don't cross dangerously, follow overtaking signals, and don't anchor unless needed. Rule 10 is about traffic separation schemes, like in the English Channel. It tells us what to do when we are in a TSS. Let us understand the rule in simple points. 1. Follow the lane. Ships using a traffic lane must move in the same general direction as the lane. 2. Join or leave safely. Ships should enter or exit at a small angle to the traffic lane, not suddenly or sharply. 3. Keep clear of separation zone. Avoid sailing in the separation line or separation zone except when necessary, like emergencies or fishing. 4. Crossing the lane. If a ship must cross a traffic lane, it should cross at right angles, 90 degrees, so that other ships can clearly see its movement. 5. Small sailing and fishing vessels. Small boats, sailing ships, and fishing vessels should not block or hinder big ships following the lane. 6. Stay out if possible. Ships not using the scheme should keep clear of it. 7. Avoid anchoring in TSS. Do not anchor inside a traffic separation scheme, unless it's an emergency. Stay tuned for our next videos for next parts of Rules of Road. Meanwhile, subscribe to our channel and do not forget to click on the bell icon.